All right, everyone, uh, let's get this thing started. Welcome to the Turn Website Visitors into Customers with Website Feedback Webinar. Uh, my name is Machik, and I'm the Digital Customer Success Manager here at Servicate. Uh, I'll be your host and presenter for today's webinar. And today's goal is to help you learn as much as possible about how you can uh, leverage website feedback for customer conversion in different scenarios on your website. But first, let's get uh, housekeeping out of the way here. First up, as with all webinars that we do, uh, it's being recorded and will be sent to you uh, if you registered. So be on the lookout for that sometime probably tomorrow. I would, yeah. Also, Feel free to write any questions you may have pertaining to today's topic in the chat. Uh, don't forget about that. I uh, will get to those at the end. And speaking of questions, as always, I'll hold the 15-minute Q&A where we'll get a chance to explore some of the questions that you already sent in and questions you may have during today's webinar as well. And before we kick off here, let me quickly give you a rundown of what you can expect for today. First up, I'll talk to you a little bit about website visitor intent while also going into the different types of intent you can expect from your visitors uh, and how that plays into the bigger picture. And that will lead us into gathering uh, user intent feedback, where I'll address how you can start doing that effectively using website surveys and what you can do with the feedback you're gathering, uh, ultimately helping you convert more customers. Uh, I'll give you some cool real-life use case examples to show you how other companies are actually doing this so stay tuned for that and then uh, analyzing feedback to decode visitor intent yes uh, i'll show you as well how you can take your data and the different methods of uh, interpreting it right and putting it into action and as always we'll finish up with the 15 minute q a as i mentioned all right so to give you a better understanding of visitor intent to start off here Basically, website visitor intent describes the purpose or more precisely the goal of a user when they're interacting with the website. And of course, these vary, right? And I'll go over the most common types shortly. But first, there's actually four main reasons I want to share with you as to why it's important for you to understand what your visitors' intentions are, right? Uh, starting with the fact that it that'll help you improve conversion rate, right? Simply put, once you get a better understanding uh, of what your visitors are looking for and why they're doing that, you're basically taking the necessary steps to optimize your website. And by way of doing that, you're actively guiding them towards conversion actions, right? Such as buying whatever service you have to offer or even getting them to sign up for a newsletter or purchase uh, one of your products in your eShop, right? With the goal of increasing your conversion rate. Uh, it also helps you with uh, targeted con uh, targeted content creation, getting that fundamental understanding of why they're here, right? Gives you a chance to create content that directly addresses their preferences, uh, interests, and pain points, of course. And this could be particularly uh, useful, of course, for companies with active blogs. Make no doubt about it. Now, you get a chance to not only focus on your, uh, not only focus your resources and time into content that your visitors actually want, but content that resonates with them, but it will also foster uh, deeper connections, once again, increasing the chances of converting them down the road, right? And that's what we want. All right, moving on. Similar to targeted content creation, by understanding uh, visitor intent, you can create personalized user experiences. Uh, what this means is you can tailor the experience of your website to meet their needs, right? Adjusting whatever necessary uh, that will lead to them interacting more with your website, meaning higher engagement, uh, increased time spent on your site. And of course, this paves the way for higher conversion rate. You're, you're starting to see the pattern, right? But ultimately, all of this boils down to the fact that you'll be making decisions that are data driven. So once you get the full picture of why somebody is on your website, uh, you'll get a chance to, of course, analyze that data, uh, providing you with incredible insights into their behavior, preferences, pain points, right, as I mentioned already. And this, uh, it's actually this data that you'll use to inform uh, strategic uh, decision making, right, naturally helping you prioritize website improvements, content creation efforts, marketing strategies, and so on, right, to achieve the goals you originally set out on in the first place. So, yeah. These are four of my personal favorite reasons uh, when talking to customers about the 
importance of visitor intent and how vital they are in uh, creating a user-centric website uh, experience. It's all about maximizing the effectiveness of your strategic efforts, and in this case, driving conversions. Now, it's time to get into the different types of visitor intent uh, that you're most likely to be met with. And in general, there are different schools of thought here, meaning depending on uh, on what your goals are and what the de department you're coming from, there can be three to four different types, right? For today's topic, we're going to focus on four types, starting with transactional intent and it's in the name right transaction so these visitors are coming to make a purchase so think of like online retail stores right e-commerce platforms but ultimately the goal of the user here is that they've come to complete a specific action uh yeah we've also got navigational intent and here these visitors are most likely uh, they read up on a resource or a specific page on your website, right? The goal here is to achieve a specific destination. So, for example, they go on Google and search Facebook. Well, that's navigational intent, right? Because the intent is to uh, access Facebook. To make this a little easier to understand, uh, you can think of it as like an alternative to uh, typing out the full URL. That's navigational intent. Next up is informational intent. And here the visitor wants additional information on the topic or answers to a specific question. So basically you can think of it as like they're in research mode and they're seeking answers to the to queries, right? To give you an example, like people visiting news websites or I don't know, Wikipedia or something, they're, they're there with the intent of finding out more about something. And the last one is commercial intent. With this, the visitor intention is most likely to compare services, right? The goal is uh, which service is better and which are they most likely to purchase. In fact, it's often considered as the precursor to transactional intent, as it sort of like sounds the alarm that the user is close to pulling the trigger but needs some more guidance. And that's the four main types of visitor intent that I wanted to quickly cover here. But then the question remains, how do we understand why our visitors come to our website in the first place? How can we adapt to their intentions? How do we expand on all of this? And more importantly, how do we gather website feedback, right? How do we gather, uh, how do we start gathering website feedback so that we can start acting on it, right? And my answer to you all is website surveys. The feedback that you'll be gathering here first and foremost uh, gives you a chance to get direct insights into visitor needs, right? Website surveys make it easy for you to ask the questions about their intentions, right? Uh, right on right on your website. So whether that means asking about their preferences, pain points, or all of the above, uh, this means you're taking the time to gain valuable insights into what actually motivates them and what their goals are for their visit, right? Great. This is what we're looking for. This will also help uh, you validate and even refute assumptions about their visit. Because from experience, uh, what you think the visitor wants or needs does not always align with the true hard facts of reality. And this is essentially why we're using surveys here, right? To help you solidify your ideas, allowing you to uh, adjust your strategies accordingly. Yeah. This feedback is going to create incredible opportunities for improvement. Think about it. Uh, the feedback you're collecting will highlight areas where your website may be falling short in meeting visitor intent, right? And of course, this depends on the type of website survey you're running, but I'll get into that more when I give you some cool use case examples in a little bit. So whether the navigation is confusing, uh, your product information is unclear, or the page is simply taking forever to load, it's all an opportunity to identify areas of improvement, allowing you to, you guessed it, make the changes and uh, enhancing visitors' experience, right? So they don't get discouraged while they're making that visit. In the end, uh, visitor intent surveys, uh, generally speaking, the, the website surveys are a treasure and an invaluable piece to your arsenal that you shouldn't take for granted. We'll get into that shortly with some awesome examples, as I mentioned. They are paramount to continuously let you optimize your website, the user experience, and drive conversions and ultimately, that's how we're going to turn our visitors into customers, right? But speaking of website feedback and surveys, this is a great time to mention where you can actually start busting out these website surveys with ease, SurveyK. Uh, if you've been tasked with increasing the uh, conversion rate, 
this is a great place to start. Ultimately, our platform makes the entire process of gathering customer feedback and acting on it a breeze, and it couldn't be easier to get started. Allow me to explain. Uh, if you don't, if you don't know where to begin, uh, let's say you're a uh, marketer and struggling with finding the right questions to ask. Right? You can ask. Uh, you can actually use our awesome AI creator to get the ball rolling for you. Uh, basically, the, the way it works is uh, you type in your idea you have using a couple of sentences. Maybe you'll put something like, understand what customers think about our new online checkout process. And from there, the AI will craft a survey for you in seconds. And if you've watched too many uh, Terminator movies and you're still hesitant about AI, don't worry, we've got over 300 plus expertly crafted templates to choose from as well. So you have no excuse to get started. Last but not least, uh, for those wondering, uh, you can easily integrate your favorite tools with it to automate your workflows using our platform as well, including HubSpot, Salesforce, Clavio, and plenty of others as well. You can get the full list on our website, so check that out. So if you're looking for an effortless software for getting continuous customer insights at scale, give us a try. We're, we've got a pretty cool free trial for you to test things out. In fact, on top of the free trial that I just mentioned, you also get 10-day access to try out our business plan features, meaning if you don't originally have website service, for example, on your plan, you get 10 days to test them out right away to see if it's the right fit for you. So yeah, let's get right back to it. All right, so let's begin. Uh, put all of this, I wanna put all of this stuff into action, right? I've actually gathered some cool uh, use case examples to share with you all today uh, to give you a better understanding of how uh, this website feedback strategy can be applied in different scenarios. And to start off, I wanted to focus on websites that have active blogs. Some of you out there have truly impressive blogs. I've seen them. Uh, which means you're putting in the hard work, right? And since you're putting in all that time, it'd also be great if people were actually responding and engaging with the blog content that you're putting out, right? Nobody wants their hard work to go to waste. Uh, that's why it's never a good idea to just hope for the best, right, in this scenario. You need to know what your readers want and when they want it, and this is where surveys coming into play, right? Putting a simple survey on your blog can help with everything from uh, content satisfaction, content ideas, uh, and ultimately is going to help uh, boost blog engagement and traffic. And that way you can ultimately drive them to perform whatever it is that you consider a conversion. So whether that's signing up for a newsletter or signing up for a free trial of your platform, that's the goal here. All right, and for this use case example, I wanted to actually use one of our customer stories, Brainly, as they've done a fine job of actually utilizing website surveys within their blog. So it'll be something cool to explore. Now, if you don't know what Brainly, uh, the company, it's the largest uh, online knowledge sharing community of over 300 million students, parents, and experts. Uh, this will uh, help kind of like set the stage here. They already knew that they have a large user base, right? So naturally, they needed to capture feedback efficiently, right, to keep up with their needs. And by harnessing uh, customer feedback for content marketing, they managed to double their blog traffic. That's right. Uh, their outreach manager actually led the initiative to help them produce more frequent, high-level reports and in-depth articles and improved survey response rates by simply by simplifying the questions, meaning they added more, uh, what is it called, uh, like open-ended questions. And in a moment uh, here, I'll show you how uh, that type of survey would look like. A notable example was a report on students' uh, anxiety regarding returning to school during the pandemic, and it offered unique insights that filled the gap in mainstream coverage, right? So this report significantly increased their blog traffic. More precisely, it doubled it just by asking the right questions. Uh, their strategy was all about placing surveys on highly tra uh, trafficked pages, right? To widen the respondent pool beyond registered users, which ensured higher engagement. And with this approach, uh, supported by our intuitive uh, website surveys, uh, enabled Brainly to create one-of-a-kind, timely, and most important, uh, relevant content that helped them propel their PR and marketing success. Now, taking a step back a little here, you can imagine how this can work in other scenarios as well. 
uh, when you're asking your customers the right questions at the right place, you're going to be rewarded with feedback that you will turn into tailored content. Uh, higher engagement and driving traffic and opening the door for converting as well. So let's take a closer look at uh, one of these surveys just to highlight quickly why it's so effective. And so using our improve your blog content strategy template, our first question here, as you can see, is how relevant to you is the content on our blog? But the follow up, which is the important one here, uh, you're taking the time to ask your visitors what they actually want you to write more about. It's a multiple answer uh, question, but of course, you're, you're also invited with an open ended answer at the end, which is the key here. And of course, within this same survey, if you look at the fourth question, uh, you can also encourage them to fill out a form field. Um, yeah, allowing you to add them to your newsletter list. There's a lot, lot to work with here, as you can see in the picture. Ultimately, just like with the example uh, use case, uh, you can double your traffic just by adding a simple website survey and more traffic means more leads and opportunities to convert visitors. All right. Next up, I wanted to showcase how you can use uh, website surveys in a similar way on your eShop if you've got one. Uh, as you've probably guessed by now, uh, you're missing out on a lot by not implementing this strategy to gather feedback if you're in e-commerce and you've already got a website up and running. Everything from understanding their reason for their visit to, uh, to uh, assessing the how much the clarity of your product descriptions actually influences your customer decisions to make a purchase, right? Basically, it will allow you to prioritize which product descriptions to optimize based on their impact on sales. We're also, uh, we're looking to turn our visitors into customers, right? But first you need to dig a little deeper with surveys so you can strategize an action plan going forward. So for your eShop, for example, you can use a combination of uh, survey strategies to help turn that feedback into actionable insights. For example, you can use a what's the purpose of your visit survey and combine it with a improved product messaging survey. So now you're gathering intent and finding out if the product descriptions you're putting out are actually clear for your visitors, right? Helping you adjust the messaging, right? Clarifying everything on the fly. Uh, I've actually put together a quick demonstration to show you of how that would look in a real life setting. So let me just switch my screen here. All right, and we're back. As mentioned, uh, let's set up uh, two surveys to reflect what I just mentioned regarding our eShop. Uh, first up, we'll want to set up a website visitor's goal survey to find out what their goals are, right? And my plan is to put that on our main page. So uh, let's get to it. I create my survey like so. I will choose a template, of course. Let's use the AI-assisted search. We'll be using the website uh, surveys like so. Okay, and I will type in goals. And what do we have here? Okay, nice. Okay, website visitors goals right there. Let's use this template. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now let's head on over to, no, actually, yeah. As you can see, it's a nice and simple survey. One question, right? That's all you need. And of course you can edit it should you need to. Uh, now let's head on over to the target tab to make sure that it appears only on our web, on our main web page, right? So let's go over here, only certain pages, and I will put in the exact link here of the main page, which is that. Perfect. And of course you can also show this survey depending on a specific trigger, right? Maybe you wanted to show up right away or maybe after a few seconds or even if they've triggered a certain event. In this case, let's uh, just let it load after a few seconds. How about let's do three seconds. Great. Let's go over to the launch tab right there. And that is all there is to it, right? I will click that start now. Now just to get things running, uh, I'll also set up the second survey as well. So let me just do that quickly. Okay. And this time we'll do it a little bit differently because the goal of this one is a little bit different. 
let's use the template again we're going to be doing the website survey okay and of course we'll type in messaging why not see what comes up and we want something like improve there we go improve messaging clarity i'm going to use this template cool and uh yeah let's use that one uh we have two questions that you can see uh this will be crucial in this instance right um does the page tell you everything you need to know about the product do you have any questions and so on great let's target it once more mm, this time let's do something different oh and of course i'm gonna have to target this on the specific page that i wanted to appear and in this case i believe we will go on here let me just paste that this should be on that perfect and we will want to also do it a little bit differently maybe this time let's do it so it activates when the person scrolls about i don't know 50 50 percent of the page and it will appear okay uh now let's let's just put that in there okay launch start and it's ready to go now let's go to our main website and let's see what's going on and see if the first one will pop up let's see as you can see yep it took about three seconds and here's our first survey what's the goal of your visit to our website today there it is and then we'll head on to the eShop that I've this is for demonstration purposes I created this little website uh, and um, yeah let's see what happens when I scroll down okay and there you go right I went 50% down and this survey came up does the page tell you everything you need to know about the product great uh, so basically uh, when you're applying these type of e-commerce surveys wherever it makes sense as with the examples I just showed you right it will help you uh, reveal insights into your customer shopping experience right giving you a chance to always stay on top of things right and fine-tune your platform uh, for overall uh, user friendliness uh, allowing those conversions to naturally flow right let me just come back here for a second for the next use case one second all right and for our next uh, use case example who doesn't have a landing page that you'd hope would convert better now here's another question for you who has a landing page but isn't using website feedback right let's dive into this a little bit more as with our prior uh, use case examples uh, yes you're missing out on a lot by not including website survey on there right they land on your landing page and that's great but this is an ideal situation to actually find out what they're actually looking for on your page like literally uh, and you get a chance to ask uh, now there are many ways a person can find themselves on your landing page of course maybe through an ad maybe your home page maybe social media posts maybe it's part of an organic search result I don't know whatever the reason they're here and the least you can do in this instance is actually ask them that one important question which is what are you looking for on our website to help me expand on this I want to share with you another one of our customer stories uh, where they actually use this strategy to become a custom packaging leader so let me just get to that okay so here we go mm, to give you a brief um overview uh, pack help is an online marketplace for custom branded packaging right ultimately they use our software to enhance their product development and customer understanding with the main goal being understanding the motivations behind customer actions sound familiar right they want to know what they're doing why so the goal was to learn from um from their customers and streamline business decisions based on that feedback so that they're not just hoping for the best but actually steering product development based on data driven decisions and it was as simple as that i wanted to share pack help because they actually use the website survey that asked that one vital question i just mentioned right what are you looking for on our website and what happened was something uh, truly awesome 
the survey turned out to be a huge success, helping them gather over 10,000 uh, res uh, responses. And within that vast bank of feedback, they realized that about 40% of people were just simply browsing, right? They had no intention of ever purchasing anything. So it became clear that uh, the company needed to attract more quality leads and make the offer a lot more appealing for visitors. Not only that, but they found out that many website visitors uh, simply had a hard time finding what they needed. Uh, this gave them a chance to regroup and strategies going forward. They used qualitative feedback mainly, right, to redesign their homepage as well as uh, landing pages with high traffic and ran A-B tests, right, to track if the changes uh, were actually going in the right direction. The summary is this. Once they saw uh, how easy it was to put out these surveys together, in this case, I believe they also used our segment integration as well. Uh, they started to put out more surveys, including in-product surveys, with, uh, which uh, ultimately helped them rack up over 30,000 responses over like, I don't know, 50 surveys that they put out. And this is how ultimately that one question of what are you looking for on our website led to them helping them kind of like uh, identify low qual quality traffic and optimizing conversion rates, right? It's a spectacular example of, uh, what is it? Less is more, right? <laughs> All right. And our last use case that I want to squeeze into today's webinar, anybody with a pricing page, right? Because sometimes it's not the pricing itself that's stopping somebody from making a purchase, as we found here at Servicate. Uh, it could be a wide range of things that are scaring people off. So it's worth actually asking your customers. And in this case, what you can do is use a pricing page clarity survey on your website to start gathering feedback. As with the e-commerce use case live demonstration that I just showed you, it's the same deal. I made sure that it appeared only on the pricing page. I'm giving you a little example here. Of course, this is like, no. The point is, it couldn't be more straightforward than this. And the reason why I wanted to bring this uh, use case up is because, well, from experience, I know that uh, we've actually been using website surveys on our very own pricing page to evaluate its clarity and help us gauge uh, visitor understanding, right? And it's truly been a game changer. Now, what do I mean by that? Uh, the point here is that uh, it will be a game changer for you as well in that by uh, implementing this kind of survey on your page, it allows you to keep your uh, finger, so to speak, on the pricing pulse, right? Help you evaluate, uh, what is it? Uh, every like pricing release and see if it's better than the last one. Essentially, you're monitoring whether your pricing is clear to everyone and then of course, improving on it whenever you see the opportunity. And from there, uh, this allows you to check what plan your customers are willing to pay for. Uh, which helps in changing the pricing model going into the future, right? I know it's been a key to helping us guide um, future pricing strategy decisions, and that's the idea here, right? To create a pricing model that resonates with your audience so you can start turning those visitors into customers. Now, for the last part, I wanted to quickly touch on the subject of how you actually be analyzing and prioritizing feedback once you start running these surveys yourself. Um, so to expand on that, I'll actually be using Servicate once again to demonstrate how easy it is to start doing that as well. So let me just share my screen once more. One second here. Okay, so uh, we're on our sample results, right? And as you can see, we've got uh, around 75 responses here uh, to work with, which is great. Uh, this is the Analyze tab, of course. You'll, you'll find both uh, your quantitative and qualitative data all in one area. Uh, sticking to our theme, today we'll want to focus mainly on qualitative data as it can provide us with more depth and context, right? So more specifically, uh, we're dealing with text answers, such as this one right here, asking our visitors exactly uh, we'd love to hear your suggestions on how we could improve, right? We've got three pages of answers, which is great. One, two, three, right there, you can see. So we can either go through them one by one, and by by all like by all means go for it, right? If you've got the patience, right? Or you can use some other cool tricks to give you like a better reading, right? First off, we can use the word cloud, as you can see right there. And if you've ever 
mm, if you've never heard of the word cloud, it's basically a visual representation of the most common used words within a given context, right? The bigger the word, the more often it's being used throughout these messages. In our example here, as you can see, uh, we've got products, features, users, and more, right? This gives you like an idea of what our respondents are answering, where the sentiment is for the question you're asking. And of course, as I've mentioned, you can dig a little deeper and go through them, uh, you know, like case by case basis. But how about we try something different? Actually, our a wonderful product team has been working hard to fine tune our latest AI topics feature. So let's use that. Let's take a look. I'm clicking on that topics. There we go. And here's what's going on. Uh, so the goal of this feature is to basically allow you to analyze uh, open ended uh, text responses, right, a little easier. The AI uh, looks at all of our text responses and from there feedback is assigned to corresponding topics, right? In this example, uh, and through the analysis of these like 53, I believe, let me see here. Yes, this, yeah, 55 responses. Uh, we can see that the AI created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten topics based around these responses, meaning it took their answers and based on their context, divided them into ten different topics, right? So you can see you've got topics like uh, product information enhancement, great. Customer communication, wow. Product discovery, right? And of course, what else? Website user experience, great. Uh, and you can, of course, click on each one individually uh, to take a closer look, right, as to what's happening there. Essentially, AI topics is all about getting insights from collected responses in a fast and efficient way. And that's what we're looking for, right? And it's a great way to take all of that fabulous qualitative data that you'll be gathering with these uh, website surveys. And of course, from there, acting on it to help um, helping you turn customers, uh, visitors into customers going forward. All right. I think that about does it for that. Uh, I think it's time for the Q&A. So I'll see you in a second. All right. Let me just set up the uh, slides here. That we got prepared. Okay, so first, uh, how about we take care of the questions that were sent in? Uh, there's three to take care of, so let's get right into that. All right, first question, what do we got here? Okay, this one comes from Carol, uh, Carolina, and it goes like this. Uh, for website surveys, is there a code that we have to paste, and if so, on every page? Uh, I didn't mention this during the webinar, so this is a great question to start with here. Uh, yes, uh, if you plan on launching a website survey, you definitely need to install a tracking code first. The good news is you need to do this only once. And of course, uh, you can either install it manually. Uh, we've got the instructions all laid out for you on how to do that. Or you can use our uh, one-click installation button, which you can use with the uh, Google Tag Manager or WordPress, and I believe segment as well, so that's cool. And no, you don't have to put the uh, the tracking code on every page uh, that you'll be putting the surveys on, just your website one time. So thank you, Carolina, for that question. And I see that Agnieszka already put up the link there. Awesome, thank you. Let's go to the next one. If I update my web survey, how long does it take to update, and this comes from Mick. Uh, that's a great question. Yeah, if your if your survey is already live, this is a matter of simply making sure that you hit the uh, publish button after you've edited. It. So as soon as you're done editing it, click the publish button, and you're good to go. Next time around, it will be updated version of your website survey. And our last question from the write-ins is: Can I set up? Can I set up an on-site survey to only a certain percentage of people? And this comes from Nora. Uh, okay, if I understand you correctly, then yes, this is definitely an option. Uh, I didn't mention this during the demonstration, but I'm happy that this question was brought up because it's, it's just a matter of going into your the same target where we went to when we were discussing 
uh, the you know how you want the survey to pop up, right? How you want it to trigger, and finding the audience tab uh, menu. And there, you get all kinds of uh, options to specify who sees what, right? Uh, so that's definitely something you can do, and you can definitely make it so that the surveys show up to a certain percentage of traffic, right? And that brings us to a close with the uh, write-in questions. And it looks like, yeah, looks like that's about all the questions we have for today. But if anything comes up later on, uh, you can always shoot me an email or write into our awesome uh, support chat uh, on our website. So, uh, yeah, we're wrapping things up here. And I wanted to quickly remind you that I'll be sending you out a recording of the webinar tomorrow. Please make sure, if you can, to fill out the survey uh, that comes attached with it. I always appreciate your feedback and it plays a huge part in helping us create uh, these webinars for you in the future. So don't skip that, please. If you've enjoyed this webinar, uh, we've got more coming as always. Uh, be sure to visit our webinar directory that's located on our website where you can view the previous webinars and sign up for upcoming ones as well. So thank you so much for uh, to everyone for your uh, for your attendance. Thank you for everyone that uh, sent in your questions. Thank you, Agnieszka, who was on chat today, helping us out here. Great job, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Have a wonderful rest of your week and see you at the next one. Take care.